you see, this is the kind of attitude that we Christians will face when Muslims dominate. This is the kind of attitude that we Christians will face when Muslims dominate. Let us be clear. If this man that you saw on camera, Islam instructs that he should be killed. The hate speech in the Quran. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I'm gay, they are all homophobic in the Quran. Homophobia, you know. And to those good Muslims, I say that if you're condemning the practices of your own religion, leave it. Stand up for yourselves, Christians. Find your balls and start speaking up for your brothers and sisters around the world. I'd like to talk about what's happening in India at the moment and the, the BBC coverage of the ban that has occurred in India with regards to the wearing of the headscarf in Indian schools and how the BBC was so quick to publicize and to elevate this particular topic as a question of concern for us all about the treatment of Muslims in India. And I want to ask the question to all the BBC employees, those editors, its chairman, and to all the sycophants of the BBC, why has the BBC not covered the Hindutva's persecution of Christians in India. Destruction of churches, harassment of pastors, beating of Christian villagers. All of these things have occurred in India and the BBC had nothing to say about it. But the moment a headscarf gets banned in a Hindu school, the BBC are all over it like a rash. <laughs> now, what is that telling you about the liberal progressives? About their hypocrisy? About their double standards? And about their willful silence of the persecution of Christians in India by Hindus? As well as their persecution of Christians in Pakistan. Do you remember the moral outrage of the liberal progressives when a Christian couple had their legs broken and were burned alive in Pakistan by a Muslim mob? No, you don't, do you? And the reason why you don't is that these progressive hypocrites don't think that the lives of Christians are worthy of the same coverage as the lives of Muslims in that era, area of the world. I want to point out to you that the ban on headscarves also affects Hindu girls. The wearing of a headscarf is some, a common practice of Hindu girls as well. Muslim girls are not being targeted in India. And you can see that because the response of the Hindutva movement was to hand out orange scarves to Hindu girls so that they could wear them. So the BBC is portraying this like, oh, poor persecuted Muslims, whilst ignoring the fact that the same ban affects Hindu girls and ignoring completely the persecution of Christians in India. You don't need to take moral lessons from these hypocrites. Nothing. Do not take moral lessons from progressive hypocrites who are selective about the causes that they want to talk about. They talk about the persecution of Ouija Muslims in China. What about the persecutions of Christians in China? And let's be clear, ladies and gentlemen, if the Islamists that come to this park on a regular basis were ever to gain power 
in this country, I guarantee they will prescribe the activities of Christians, Hindus and Sikhs in this country. Don't believe me. I'm a liar, I hear the Muslims say. I hear the comments in the comment section. Go and look at what the British government says about Saudi Arabia. Let me pull it up for you. Let me pull it up for you. I'll go and kill my phone now and get it covered in water. Bear with me one second. So this is the British government talking about talking about Saudi Arabia. Okay, this is on the page of the British government's official website talking about the local laws and customs of Saudi Arabia. And why am I using Saudi Arabia as my example? Why? Because Saudi Arabia has been dominated by Islam for 1400 years. It is the purest example of what Islam looks like in practice. Listen, 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 listen. This is from the government, Her Majesty's government talking about Saudi Arabia. The public practice of any form of religion other than Islam is illegal. So the Muslims complain that France is discriminating against Muslims because they can't wear a face covering. They complain that Hindus are persecuting Muslims because they can't wear a headscarf, but they defend Saudi Arabia making any practice of any religion in public illegal. Do you see, ladies and gentlemen, they will do far worse to you than they suffer. They defend practices far worse in Saudi Arabia than they would have you condemn in India or France. Christians, you need, I just did, you need to pay attention. He actually said, give me an example immediately after I read the example. How hilarious. So ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, do not be swept up by the deceitful narrative of Islamophobia. Do not allow that deceitful narrative of Islamophobia to blind you to the many and consistent examples of prejudice and Christophobia that exists in the Muslim world. Anti-Christian pogroms in Pakistan, anti-Christian pogroms in Egypt, the tearing down and destruction of entire churches, the annihilation of tens of thousands of Christians in Nigeria, the bombings of churches in Pakistan, the protests and outrage by Indonesian Muslims because a Christian was elected as the governor of Indonesia. The kidnapping of a Christian pastor in Malaysia by the authorities that is caught on film, making it illegal for Christians to proselytize to Malay Muslims, making it illegal to build new churches in Indonesia. The murder of Christians in Turkey, the attempted genocide of Christians in Syria and Iraq, the complete illegality to practice Christianity in public in Saudi Arabia. How many examples of Christophobia do you need to see before you wake up when I finished? Do you need to see before you counter the progressive narrative of Islamophobia 
by talking about the reality of Christophobia in the Islamic world. What about in the UK? What about the attempted murder of Nisa Hussein, caught on film? What about the suspected Islamist terrorist who tried to murder a Christian in this very park that the government has covered up because the police won't make it public that they are doing an anti-terrorist investigation and the media hushed it over and hid it in plain sight? What about the suspected Muslim in East London who tried to tear down a cross? And let me give you two examples anecdotally from my own experience. I went to Morocco on holiday. I was walking through the streets of Morocco wearing my wooden cross and a Muslim came up to me pointing at my cross and going, no, no, no. And he was telling me to take my cross off. And a Muslim called me over and he said the Muslim was angry with me because I was wearing my cross near to the mosque. Here's another anecdotal, anecdotal evidence. A brother of mine, an uncle in the faith, was cutting the grass of his church in a Muslim area. An elderly Muslim man walked past him, called him over, pointed to the cross on the church and said that the cross was offensive to Muslims and should be taken down. And why did he think it was right to offend Muslims? That's what the Muslim man asked the Christian man in this country. Now I accept that anecdotal evidences are not proof. I accept that. But I do, I experienced what I experienced. That is my experience. And this uncle did tell me what he told me. So when are we going to start challenging the Christophobia amongst Muslims? Stand up for yourselves, Christians. Find your balls and start speaking up for your brothers and sisters around the world. Deus vult! Deus vult! Deus vult! Deus vult! Deus vult! Deus vult! Okay. Any questions on that topic? Any questions? Question. You asked, did you want, you wanted yeah, 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 to ask? Yeah, 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 yeah. I ask you a question. Don't you believe, sir, Mr. Speaker, that all this you've said, I'm not just rubbishing it, but governments are using religion to keep nations of people away from each other by saying, ISIS, Taliban, this, do you, have you seen any ISIS? Have you seen any Taliban? Have you seen, you haven't, may, you, may I reply? you go by faith of what they tell you in the paper. May, may, may I reply? May I reply? Yes, go Okay. On. So the, the uncle asks, yeah, well, he asks, does he not believe that there are the good, it's an act of the government yeah. simply yeah. to separate peoples from people? Yes, like Ladies and gentlemen, don't give him, don't give him, JC, don't, don't give him air time. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, Islam was persecuting Christians and Jews and pagans from the time of Muhammad. Dimitude is a practice of Muslim Sharia law. There's no Muslim that would deny that Dimitude is part of Islamic teaching. The Quran says that Christians should pay the jizya tax and feel themselves subdued. Some translators put it as humiliated. That and this Muslim behind the camera said, and why not? And this Muslim nods his, okay, sorry. This Muslim says, and why not? Well, let me finish, let me finish. So this is the reality of what Islam teaches and it is legitimate and a moral requirement of every Christian to stand up against this injustice. Let me, let me read.
Brother, you wanted to ask a question. He's asked his question. What question do you want to ask? What, what's your question? You wanted to ask a question. What's your question? The hate speech in the Quran. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I'm gay. They are all homophobic in the Quran, homophobia, you know? Well, it's in every religion, I know, I don't, I don't have any religion, you know? I don't believe any religion. I'm from Saudi Arabia, I come to here. Let me know, let me deal with his question. He was polite to let you... Right, so... But sorry, because my English is not good. You have your conversation with him, I'm going to stop. I hold, I hold, I hold, I hold, I hold. I heard your question. So, yes, there is hate speech in Islamic sources. The Quran describes Christians and Jews as the worst of creatures. In the Hadiths, it says that those who make images like Christians on the Day of Judgment will be the most hated by Allah. I will send the reference. It says in the Hadiths, that the companions of the Prophet never left an image or a cross in the house of Muhammad except that he obliterated it. The Quran commands Muslims to wage war against non-believers until they become Muslim or until they pay the jizya and find themselves subdued. If I wrote a pamphlet and put it through letterboxes saying that we should do to Muslims what their holy books say that they should do to us, I would be arrested, prosecuted and thrown into prison for hate speech. But yet the Muslims will defend doing it okay. to Christians. First thing they do is they say that you're lying. Then when you show them the evidence, they try to defend it. Next question, go on. Wait, let, let him ask a question. Yeah, here, go ask a question. Ask a question. Ask a question on topic. Okay, so the brother asked a question that is completely off topic. Next question, you wanted to ask a question. I talked about hate speech. I did talk about, did I answer your question, sir? Thank you, so I did answer his question. Right, next question. You went to Morocco, yeah? You said you went there? Yes. Now, Islam, Muslim country, we agree, yeah? Now, how comes the Jews, yeah, with the only group of people that they respect are the Moroccans? I can go to, Moroc to Israel with a Moroccan passport and they won't stamp it just in case I want to go and do Hajj, yeah? Right? If I got my British passport, they won't let me in because I've got a couple of convictions for the young wacky back and say, you're a, you're a, a drug dealer, yeah? You know what I mean? So, Islam, right? What you're saying is a lot of things that are there and they're not there because the Kafar, they were persecuted. The Jews were persecuted by the, the Kafar. The Kafar, you know, the, the, the group of Christians, they, Kafar, they used to call him, yeah? Kafar, by the way, has the spiritual equivalent of calling a black man the N word. This is an insulting term right, that, that was, Muslims throw upon no, Christians. It it's hate speech, no, it it's an abusive no, term. No, 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 Don't, no, 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 do not. Do not tolerate Muslims calling you kafar. Yeah, it's, it's an abusive yeah. language, linguistic listen, term. Listen. There was a group of people named that in the history, yes or no? And who were, th those are Christians and Jews. Right. Right, no, I'm doing questions, sir. Okay. Not, I'm not having a deep. Right, but the point is, what I'm trying to say to you is. What's the question? The question is, there is no religion in this world, including the Jews. They said in their statement, we're God's chosen people. So what's the rest what's of it? What's the question? The question is, you're just. <laughs> targeting one particular re religion about all the bad What's the there. question? The question is you're on. Right, so he hasn't got a question. But allow me to reply to his comment. Allow me to reply to his comment. The difference is that if I ask the Muslim to show me from the New Testament where persecution of Muslims or Jews is called for, they will not be able to find me 
a single verse, but I can find in the Quran and the Hadiths clear instructions to persecute Christians and Jews. And that is the difference that we face. The liberal media has lied because the liberal media wants to sustain a narrative of three Abrahamic faiths that are all the same. This is a lie. Christianity, Islam and Judaism teach different things. They are different religions. They have different values. They have different beliefs. If Islam dominates a society, it looks like Saudi Arabia. If Christianity dominates a society, it looks like Europe, or Ethiopia, or Armenia. Let us be clear, if this man that you saw on camera, Islam instructs that he should be killed. Simple, simple. Four witnesses. Four witnesses. Now prove it. Prove it. Because four witnesses is to rape extramarital sex. That's what four witnesses is about. Extramarital sex is a pres it's prescribed for uh, sexual relations, men and women outside of marriage. The first thing that Muslims do is always deny. The second thing that they do is try to defend. We see this in the park. We have countless examples on camera of Muslims defending slavery, sex with children, persecution of religious minorities, uh, waging war against unbelievers, raping women who are captured in war. We've got countless examples on Soko film, Sam. You should watch it more often. So, there you go. Liar! Liar! Where are the proofs? Where are your arguments? Should, in Sharia law, quick question. In Sharia law, should Christians be made dhimmis? No. Are you, are you saying that, are you saying that all of those Muslims who say that Christians should be dhimmis is wrong? There you go. There you go. Here's a Muslim saying that I should be made a dhimmi. He's saying it. Is he wrong? Is he wrong? Is he wrong? Is he wrong? No. Answer the question. No. Answer the question. Okay, we're not having a conversation. So, go on. Uh, question. Why did you say the Muslims say the same thing? Come here, come here, I'll answer you. Wait, 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 no, it's all right. Worship a cow. Worship a cow. One of the Jews, one of the intellectuals, you said the Muslims say the Jews. So let, let me reply to that. What was the question? Repeat the question. So the question was if Muslims are supposed to kill the Jews, why did the Muslims save the Jews in Spain? The brother wasn't listening to what I said. I did not say that Muslims are commanded to kill the Jews. I said that the Quran instructs Muslims to wage war against unbelievers until they become Muslim or until they pay the jizya. You need to listen to what I said. But since he brought up Spain as an example, let us use Spain as an example. When the Muslims conquered Spain, they reduced Christians and Jews to second-class citizens. They desecrated churches. They prohibited 
Christian practices. They allowed Muslims to have a higher status in law than Christians and Jews. For example, for example, Muslims could own Christian and Jewish slaves, but Christians couldn't own Muslim slaves. Muslims could marry Christian women, but Christian men couldn't marry Muslim women. And he says that it's true. And he says that it's true. So he says that it's true. So my thesis is correct. Islam is an apartheid system in which Christians and Jews will be made second class citizens. Have you read any Quran? Have you read the Quran? Have you read the Quran? Are you a scholar of the Quran? How can you comment on something? And this is what the Muslims do. Whenever you call them out on what their ideology, I'm answering your question. You asked a question, allow me to answer it. You asked me a question, allow me to answer it. He asked, what are the Jews doing to the Muslims today? And this, ladies and gentlemen, is what you've got to be aware of. The moment you put your finger on the injustices of Islam, the first thing that the Muslims do is try and change the subject. They always try to change the subject and they often want to talk about what someone is doing to the Muslims. If my boat is sinking and your boat is sinking, does me pointing out your boat is sinking stop my boat from sinking? No! So simply pointing out that Muslims are the subject of injustice does not excuse the injustices of Islam. And if Islam is guilty of injustices, every good person should fight against it and every good Muslim should leave it. Islam is the religion of justice, he says. Let me ask you a question. 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 If the British government passed a law that said in Britain that your life in terms of compensation paid by the quote Paid by, paid by the court would only ever be half my life because you're a Muslim and I'm a Christian would you say that that was an example of Islamophobia? You're not answering the question You're not answering the question You're not answering the question and this is what they do. They don't notice how he changes the. Notice how he's changing the topic. Notice how he's changing the topic. So I'm not going to talk to him. He's not answering the question. I, I'm going to do a wrap up. I'm going to do a wrap up because he, he had the opportunity to have a conversation. He ran from the conversation. The example that I gave is an example from Sharia law itself. Sharia law states that legally, in terms of compensation, the life and value of a Christian or a Jew is half that of a Muslim. If any government did that to Muslims today, they would call it Islamophobia. But they will defend doing it to Christians and Jews. At least the bad ones will. The good ones will condemn it. And to those good Muslims, I say that if you're condemning the practices of your own religion, leave it. Leave it. And turn to Christianity. Because the Christian faith, when it is followed, establishes the equality 
of all human beings in the law. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to stop because I am freezing cold. Freezing cold. Okay. Shall we go and get a cup of tea? Because I'm soaking wet and freezing cold. You have good energy, but you need it for the wrong religion. No, bro, bro, listen, tell me. I, I want you, no, be honest listen, with me. No, 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 listen. Right? No, no, listen. Listen, bro, be an honest man. No, listen, bro, be an honest man. I want you to answer my question. I don't want you to divert. I don't want you to obfuscate. No, no, no. He's brewing. You've come to the Marriott Hotel with me. Let me buy your camera if you want. He's come to the Marriott Hotel with me. Let me buy your camera. No, he's just pulling. Answer my question. No, 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 no. Answer my question. No, answer my question. If the and do not obfuscate. Do not avoid. He's, he's he's the, no, answer my question. It's a thought experiment. You don't, don't even know he, he what the question the is. That's the thing. He knows the answer. answer this Why question. Answer this question. Shamsi runs away. Shamsi runs away. Shamsi runs away. Answer my question. Hamza runs away. Hamza runs away. Answer my question. Answer my question. If the British government, if the British government passed a law that said that if you were murdered and I was murdered by the, the same person the and the same person yeah, answer the question 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 answer are you going to answer my question right well listen to the question then listen to the question then right don't you see this is the kind of attitude that we christians will face when muslims dominate this is the kind of attitude that we christians will face when muslims dominate they run look at look at their behavior they demand they demand that you take the injustices that they face seriously whilst defending the injustices that they want to inflict upon you. At least the bad ones do. Not all Muslims are the same. There are good Muslims. If you're one of those good Muslims, you need to leave Islam because you're condemning your own religion. Right. But for the rest of us as Christians, we've got to make a choice. Are we going to continually give ground to this thuggish interpretation of Islam? Or are we going to stand up for ourselves and stand up for our brothers and sisters and stand up against the teachings of Islam that lead to the discriminatory practices of Muslims against the church. Christian love demands that you stand up for your brothers and sisters and you stand up for the church against injustice and the sources of that injustice. The source of that injustice is Islam. Right. Not just Islam, but is Islam, and you should stand up to it wherever that injustice exists. Right. Deus vult! Deus vult!